Welcome to African Kingdoms, the new official expansion to Age of Empires 2 HD edition, which can be purchased on Steam. African Kingdoms adds four new civilizations, and the focus of this video is going to be on the Portuguese. You can find more information and gameplay on all of the new civilizations in the video description below. I will also have a link to my Twitch TV page where I stream Age of Empires 2 and other games regularly. So the Portuguese are classified as a naval and gunpowder civilization. They have two unique units, one unique building, two unique technologies, and three civilization-specific bonuses. The first topics that I'm going to cover are their unique units and technologies, starting with the Oregon Gun. The Oregon Gun is a ranged siege unit that fires a volley of bullets which deal damage in an area. It can only be created at the castle, and it costs 80 wood and 59.5 gold. The small gold discount is from one of their civilization bonuses, which I will cover later in this video. The Oregon Gun is considered to be a gunpowder unit, and you can imagine it as a massive hand cannoneer that deals damage in an area. This unit is also quite similar to the Scorpion, but it is more expensive and a bit more survivable. Since the damage is dealt in an area, the Oregon Gun excels against large, densely packed groups of units. The Oregon Gun itself is quite slow, and it is still vulnerable to attacks despite its high hit points and armor. A small group of enemy cavalry units or siege weapons can easily knock down an Oregon Gun if it is left unescorted. The Oregon Gun is a particularly interesting unique unit, and it can be considered a powerful support unit in the Portuguese army. In addition to the Oregon Gun, the Portuguese also have a second unique unit, which is a ship known as the Caravel. The Caravel is a bit more expensive than a galley, but they feature similar stats. What makes the Caravel unique is that its attack damage actually hits multiple units in an area. This means that the Caravel is actually a particularly effective counter against large fleets of enemy galleys, but is still very vulnerable to groups of fire ships and demolition ships. Combined with the Portuguese civilization bonuses and their unique technologies, the Portuguese will be a powerful civilization in naval combat. Now onto the unique technologies, the Portuguese can research Karek in the Castle Age for a cheap cost, and it gives Portuguese ships an additional 1 Dura and 1 Pierce armor. This upgrade makes Portuguese ships a significant threat in the water, as they will be able to absorb a lot more damage before sinking. Karak is cheap enough that the Portuguese can build a castle, and they're able to afford researching it without cutting into their navy that much. But still, Karak is likely not to come into play until the later stages of the Castle Age. Their other unique technology, Arquebus, is only available in the Imperial Age, and it is researched at the castle. Arquebus is fairly expensive, and it makes all Portuguese gunpowder units affected by ballistics. Ballistics is a Castle Age upgrade at the university that makes your ranged units and buildings fire more accurately at moving targets. This upgrade is important enough that it can even decide Castle Age fights between crossbowmen and war galleys, so the Portuguese upgrade is actually quite good. You can compare Arquebus to the Spanish Civilization bonus, which makes their cannon galleons benefit from ballistics, and that effect is quite noticeable in naval engagements. Of course, part of that difference is due to the Spanish gunpowder units also firing 15% faster, but ballistics helps tremendously when trying to hit a moving target with cannon galleons. The difference here is that Arquebus also applies to things like hand cannoneers, Oregon guns, bombard cannons, and even bombard towers in addition to cannon galleons. Each of these gunpowder units are quite strong on their own, but they are balanced by their poor accuracy against moving targets. But this technology changes that dynamic. Overall, this means that the Portuguese will have a very powerful arsenal of gunpowder units at their disposal. Now that I have covered the Portuguese unique units and technologies, it's time to move on to their civilization bonuses. The first one is that all of their units cost 15% less gold. This bonus is rather weak in the early game, but it becomes tremendously useful over the course of a single match. While every player on the map is running low on gold, the Portuguese will still be able to sustain production for a little while longer thanks to this discount. This bonus has a lot of notable implications. For starters, the Portuguese could go for a Monk Rush, which is a very, very heavy gold strategy, and then they can easily outproduce their enemies. Portuguese Monks would only cost 85 gold instead of the usual 100, and that means that their mangonels will also cost 114.75 gold instead of 135. This means that if you build two mangonels and four monks, then you will have already saved 100 gold, and therefore, you can get a free monk as well. This gold bonus also applies to civilian units such as trade carts and trade cogs. It is interesting to note that the 15% gold discount on units does not actually allow the Portuguese to go for three militia drush without mining any gold, since the three militia will cost 51 gold total, and you will only have 50 gold left over after researching loom. You can compare this bonus to the Malian Civilization bonus, which makes their buildings cost 15% less wood, since they both have a relatively low impact early game, but they can save you a colossal amount of resources in the long run. Their next bonus is that Portuguese ships gain an additional 10% HP. This bonus applies to fishing ships, transport ships, trade cogs, and all of the usual military boats as well. 
The extra ship HP allows Portuguese galleys to survive with 12 HP left over after engaging a normal galley. It takes an additional 2 hits to kill a Portuguese galley without fletching. Most ships already have a high amount of HP, so this means that the Portuguese can assert their dominance on the water from as early as the Feudal Age. In addition to the extra HP, Portuguese ships also cost 15% less gold thanks to their economy bonus. Overall, the Portuguese are going to be a very powerful civilization on the water at all stages of the game. Their final bonus is that the Portuguese can construct a unique building in the Imperial Age known as the Fiatoria. The Fiatoria costs 250 wood and 250 gold to build, and it generates a steady stream of resources without the need for villagers. The Fiatoria also takes up 20 of your available population, so this building sort of acts as a replacement for part of your villager economy. It takes roughly 67 seconds to build with one villager, and currently the Fiatoria itself will give you one of each resource every 2.5 seconds, but that value might change in the future. There are a couple of interesting things to note about the Fiatoria. For starters, it generates an infinite supply of stone meaning that the Portuguese can continue to leverage the threat of bombard towers and castles in the late game without having to buy stone at the market. This building itself doesn't necessarily generate more resources than 20 villagers would, but sometimes you will need a steady stream of gold and stone when those resources are exhausted from the map. The Fiatoria won't be the most efficient part of your economy, but it is also incredibly bulky with 5200 HP and it has very high armor as well. While your normal villagers might gather more resources, they are also vulnerable to raiding, while your Fiatoria is very safe from most attacks. The last interesting facet of the Fiatoria is that you can actually build more than one. If you really wanted to, you could replace your entire economy with five or so Fiatorias, but I'm not so sure if that's optimal. On one hand, your economy will be very resilient to raiding, but then you lose the ability to choose what resources you need. While villagers can be assigned wherever they are needed, the Fiatoria will always generate the same flow of each resource. In the later stages of the game, the Portuguese will always have an option to convert part of their economy into a valuable source of limited resources. Now onto their team bonus. Having a Portuguese teammate will actually research cartography for you and your teammates for free. Cartography is a technology at the market that allows you to see what your allies see and vice versa. Sharing vision with your teammates helps you coordinate attacks and be aware of the entire map. While other civilizations will have to wait until the feudal age to research cartography, the Portuguese will give it to everyone for free at the start of every game. If you are going for a more aggressive strategy, then you may not want to build a market early on, so cartography is not always that easy to access. And it is not actually necessary all the time either. It's worth noting that if you're on voice chat with your teammates, then you are already able to communicate information quickly enough that cartography loses a lot of value. Also in the Dark Age, there is not generally that much information to communicate besides the location of your enemies. Still though, in most games you can expect to have random players on your team, and that is when the Portuguese team bonus shines the most. Overall, this bonus is significantly weaker than most other team bonuses because its effects can be mitigated by voice chat at a higher level of play, but when voice chat is not an option, this bonus is pretty helpful. For the purposes of this video, I'm not going to go over everything in each civilization's tech tree, but I will highlight many of the most important parts. In terms of the Portuguese tech tree, they have an exceptional archer range, but they do not have access to good cavalry archers in the Imperial Age. The Portuguese do not get heavy cavalry archer or Parthian tactics, because if they did, then their cavalry archers would be almost as good as the Huns. Still though, the Portuguese do get access to strong cavalry archers in the Castle Age, and they have a decent option with the gold discount. Besides cavalry archers, the Portuguese have a great archer range with exceptional hand cannoneers, thanks to their unique technology, Arquebus. The Portuguese also have a full blacksmith. Onto the barracks, the Portuguese have access to champions and all of the infantry upgrades, which fits with their theme of being a very versatile civilization. In comparison, their stable is decent, but not great. Without access to Hussar, Paladin, or Camels, Portuguese cavalry will be weaker in the Imperial Age, but still a viable option in the Castle Age since they still get bloodlines. Moving onto the dock, we can see that the Portuguese actually lack fast fire ships, but otherwise they have all of the dock upgrades. Normally not having access to fast fire ships might make it difficult for a civilization to stage a comeback on the water if their opponent amasses a large army of galleons, but thankfully the Portuguese have the Caravel. Caravels serve as a great counter to mass enemy galleons, so overall, a lack of fast fire ships won't have a huge impact. The Portuguese will still be a powerful civilization in the water at all stages of the game. And now onto the monastery. The Portuguese are only missing illumination in the Imperial Age, which means that their Castle Age Monk Rush is still going to be a strong option. Their Siege Workshop is also missing a few technologies, and those are actually a significant loss. The Portuguese critically do not have access to Siege Rams, Siege Onagers, or even Heavy Scorpions. 
But thankfully with the addition of bombard cannons, organ guns, and siege engineers, the Portuguese will still have a reasonably good siege line in general. With arquebus making bombard cannons and organ guns benefit from ballistics, the Portuguese may not actually need siege onagers to deal with large groups of enemy units or an opposing siege line. The extra range and damage from siege engineers will also help the Portuguese siege line efficiently deal with opposing enemy siege weapons and buildings. The last important part of their tech tree will be the lack of gold shaft mining, but having access to both crop rotation and two-man saw are generally more important for bolstering your late game economy. With the 15% gold discount on all units, I don't think the Portuguese will mind not having gold shaft mining. Overall, the Portuguese have a relatively weak early game on land, but that weakness is offset by having an incredibly strong late game. In the first few ages, there are simply not enough units that cost gold to allow the Portuguese to easily leverage their gold bonus. As the Portuguese advance through the ages, they gain access to a wide variety of units that cost gold, and the savings will be monumental. Also on the sea, the Portuguese will be able to take full advantage of their ship bonus and gold bonus from an incredibly early stage. Both of these bonuses are great in water combat and they help make the Portuguese a powerful naval civilization. The Portuguese even get further help on the water thanks to both of their unique technologies as well as their unique unit, the Caravel. The Caravel provides a strong comeback mechanic for the Portuguese should they fall behind in naval production, since the Caravel deals damage in an area of effect and is extremely good against massed enemy galleys. The improved accuracy on cannon galleons will also allow the Portuguese to pick off enemy ships and coastal buildings with ease. On land though, the Portuguese must survive for the first few ages in order to get any real value out of their other bonuses. Once the Portuguese reach the castle age, they have so many decent options thanks to their gold bonus. Almost all strategies at this stage in the game incorporate units that cost gold, so the Portuguese will finally be able to keep up. And in the Imperial Age, with access to Fiatoria and a wide variety of good units, they can finally get revenge on all those civilizations that had been bullying them in the early game. Besides a strong siege push backed by gunpowder, the Portuguese have a wide variety of tricks up their sleeve, and they are the true kings of the super late game when natural resources become scarce. Overall, the Portuguese have a long list of threatening options, and I look forward to seeing how players take advantage of this truly unique set of bonuses. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like rating as well as a comment below. I always read all the comments even if I don't get a chance to respond to them individually. Feel free to let me know what types of African Kingdoms videos you would like to see next. If you are looking for more Age of Empires 2 content, then you're in the right place. My channel has all sorts of Age of Empires 2 videos, videos in African Kingdoms, as well as content relating to other games. Last but not least, I do livestream regularly on Twitch TV and I'd love to have you as part of our wonderful community. You can find my live stream schedule on my Twitch TV page by scrolling underneath the video player there. I update it every few days and it's the best way to know when I'm streaming next. My live streams are a great place to ask me questions and for community streams, it's the best place to play with or against me. As always, I appreciate the support and I'll see you all in the next video.